when you write a melody, it can be hard to figure out if it's too simple or needs variation, especially when you have lots of options or patterns to choose from. So in this video, I'm going to make a melody from scratch and show you a really simple structure that artists like Elenium, Porter Robinson, Dabin, and all your favorite melodic bass producers use to make emotional, catchy, and memorable melodies. So step one to doing all this is picking a simple sound. There's tons of reasons why you do this, but it essentially keeps you from getting paralyzed in a rabbit hole of sound design when you really don't need to be. And the best way to put it is if your song sounds good on a simple sound, then it's going to sound even better once it's all figured out and expanded upon full production. And if you're the type to get paralyzed by this, literally go on to like one of those Piano. All right. So step two is the first simple structure I will show you. And I call this three to one. So I've got a chord progression here. We're in C major. And what I like to do in Ableton is lock it to the scale just so that I can just put whatever notes and it sounds good. So today we'll be working in C major and I've made this really simple chord progression. As you can see up here, it's the six, five, one, three for the first bar and then six, five, one, four for the second bar. Uh, if chords confuse you, I made a whole video on it. It's a good idea to watch that before you watch this. And I also made a video about melody patterns, but don't be thinking that because you have all of this homework, this is gonna be some insane advanced video. It's not really, this is all really good foundational knowledge. So the chord progression sounds like this. But, we're not here for the chords, we're here for the melody. So let me put something down real quick. I've got Control Shift M to make a MIDI clip and I'm just gonna do on the first chord here. Uh, if you notice the chords are playing just one note, I have my easy chord rack. I've got the uh, MIDI clip open. I'm gonna select eighth notes and we're gonna keep this like ridiculously simple. This counts as a melody, okay? I'm gonna repeat that throughout the progression. Have a listen. All right, how can we add some variation to this? That's why I like doing the three to one. What you do is you have your melody, you repeat it three times, and then on the last time, you do a different melody. So you can hear how already that little bit of variation just adds a bit more life to it. And with a longer chord progression like this, that can be really powerful. Now it's kind of, it's kind of poopy. I might want to, I'm going to take a second and um, modify it a bit. And on your, on your one, you don't have to change it like crazy. You can do like a slight modification of it. And from here, when you have your three to one, you can start experimenting with different things like octaves. Let's change our three. That's two different, so I'm gonna bring those down to the B. That's really sick. I love that. What's it sound like an octave down? Mm, too different. What if I put the chords an octave down? And this is the strength of writing with a simple sound. You can hear what octaves sound good together. So I think we we've uh, we've settled on this here. And now let's switch it up to 150, like a millennium type beat for real. If we have something as simple as this, let's say this is our intro and we wanted to expand it onto a verse or have a potential drop riff. Now you could do the next level up from the three to one. And I'm gonna write a melody here and I want you to see if you can notice what I do. So I'm gonna take the melody that we had here 
I just do a few modifications and we'll see. And so take a listen to this. So what I've done there is what I call So stick with me here. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous. Maybe it's just because I saw Spider-Verse, but let me cook. So we can break up our melody into four different variants. And then if you play them in the specific order, then that's a good structure you can follow. So it's similar to the three to one, but we've got a few different variants of the melody. So like in a multiverse, you have like your original, this is your regular Spider-Man. Then you have the modified, like it's pretty similar, similar backstory, similar origin, but something's different about them. This is like your Peter Parker, but old. And then you have a clone. So it's pretty much the exact same guy, exact same to a T. So you've basically repeated it. And then you've got like the evil twin, the one who's just like completely different. He still has characteristics of the original, but there's something very different about him. So uh, extreme variation, variations and rhythms. It could be like the reverse version of it. So if you stick to this sort of structure, you have the original, you have the modified, you have a clone, and then you have the evil twin. You stick to this order and try to apply this concept, this multiverse concept to the next melody. And what I like to do is write one little bit of a melody and then repeat it over the chords to see how it feels and then start testing out the different structures. I like this motif here. So from here, we'll try the three to one. And this can be kind of like doing three originals and then one evil twin at the end. So let's try just reversing this. Not bad. But now we can apply another multiverse. Let's modify this. And I like making the evil twin lead back into the original. That's why he's not quite a full different person. He's like the, the mirror. And just because you have this one structure doesn't mean you have to repeat it throughout the entire chord progression. But let's say we wanted to start another original comes in. And there we go. We have something here. So as you can see here, I actually cloned this one instead of this one. You can kind of mix and match what each section is. So this is, so I always like to have the variant at the end. Then this time I went mod, a different mod. So you can see that I changed the note a little bit here and then another variant. So you can mix and match. It's like three different levels of variation of a, of a melody. So you have your original, you have a modification, which is like one or two notes change and then a variant at the end. So that's kind of like the structure I like to follow. And like now you're you're watching this, you're like, yo, Ash, what if I don't want to like write my melody in this super small form? So let's try. Try writing like a longer, more sweeping, maybe like something that would be fitting to a top line and and see if we can apply this same structure to it. So I think it runs a little long. And what I'm actually kind of hearing is doing an evil twin here. And you'll see we've actually fallen back into, <laughs> we've fallen back into the original structure. 
So this is just my brain when it's like trying to come up with melodies because I've practiced it so much. But having this kind of in the back of your head really helps you come up with melodies that don't feel repetitive. And I really like this riff. And you notice it's just because I've, uh, rather than making it fast like this, You can also spread it out a little bit more. Uh, each variant doesn't have to change on each chord. And now, once you have that, it doesn't mean you can. A layering a little bit. So you can kind of stack these together and get some really, really interesting results. What if we just use, maybe that's a little too complicated. What if we just stacked three and one over top of a uh, multiverse? And then let's make this our B section. Keep this going. Right, and then you can see how you can see how you can start structuring an entire song just because we have these mini uh, structure melodies. And screw it. Maybe maybe we hear something else. keep this going till the end of time. We could even <laughs> expand this out even more. So what if we made this section, this whole section, an original? That's right. <laughs> we can get crazy with it. And you can see how this concept and this structure doesn't just apply to melodies. You can actually do it to your entire song. Break up your chords into chord patterns and try to put it into the 3v1 pattern. Or mix and match the multiverse method. It can be expanded into different genres like dubstep with your drop rhythms. And you can have different layers all doing the same structure but in different timings. The way that you see in this example here. Leave a comment below if you're going to use this in your next song. Or consider liking and subscribing the video if this has helped you so far. And let me just continue making this song. That could be our drop. And then, oh, we we'll change up the rhythm of our chords. I think eighths are too much. This is why writing with simple sounds is so effective because you immediately hear if something is off when you play around with rhythms and melodies. It sounds a lot better up there in that octave. So we'll probably keep it there. And so like, let's say if we were to add some drums in now. And started assigning sounds to all of these. Let's try maybe other melodies that we've had. No harm in layering in the piano. And we can even have another variant of a variant. I hate this lead. See here my variant's not even that crazy different, but I'm kind of keeping to this same structure. And so before you know it, you have a you have a song. And once you have a song that you're super proud of, 
why not release it? Which is why this video sponsored DistroKid is perfect for you. Not only can you release music through all streaming services, if you end up collabing with a person, it's really easy to distribute it using DistroKid's feature Splits. Through Splits, you can add an unlimited amount of collaborators to any track, which means everybody gets paid. Plus, you can change the splits at any time, meaning if uh, anybody flakes, you're all covered. You're good to go. You can also go back in time to see any previous splits, and these are all private. And if you pick up another collaborator and they're late to join, it's not like your release will be delayed. If the collaborator is slow to sign up, DistroKid just holds the money until they're ready to join. All they need is another DistroKid account, and if they don't, DistroKid is offering a 50% off coupon to anybody you collaborate with. As always, DistroKid never takes a cut. You and your collaborators get 100% of the earnings in total. All you need is a DistroKid account. And if you don't have one, you can get a discount through my VIP link down below. If that all sounds good to you, let's listen to the final song. so much we can start layering start experimenting with sound design but essentially because i stuck to that melodic structure i was able to really expand the song try that out with whatever you're doing and hopefully you can come up with some cool stuff now go make some bangers peace <laughs>